Hey friends, welcome back to Popcorn in Bed. I'm so happy you're here. I am so excited to watch this movie. You guys, I started the Next Generation episodes. I'm like, I just need a couple episodes to get to know the characters, all for the purpose of watching the movies. Like I wasn't gonna jump right into the movies without knowing the characters. So this whole journey of watching me watch these episodes through all seven seasons has really been for this moment, but I'm so glad, you know, it's not just about the destination, it's about the journey. And I loved our journey. And I just fell in love with, as you know, this crew as we went along. I think I may have been told before when I was watching the original series movies that, okay, you need to stop before number seven and watch TNG and then you can watch number seven. And I think I had been told that maybe the crews would be combined, but I didn't realize until I was going and I saw the poster and you see Kirk and Picard on the same poster and I'm like, oh my gosh, after all this time, I think they're gonna be in the movie together. And it's weird that I feel <laughs> nervous about this. I was thinking that it's like when you have a party but you're kind of inviting two separate groups of friends and this is like you're the middleman and like combining them and you're not sure how they're going to get along and you're not sure that you know you don't want them to be separate anyways it feels like that and i'm so excited to see the old guys i'm trying to figure out where in the timeline this is like the last i saw of the next generation like if that was if this was kind of in the middle of generations or if this was after the last episode of season seven um i hope that's explained i also don't know how like we saw in the episode relics scotty had been frozen for 75 years so like how is captain kirk still alive so either we're gonna have to do some time traveling or this didn't take place after episode or season seven i don't know i'm so eager to see how this party works out and how these crews combine and what's gonna happen first movie movie seven generations here we go don't forget to like subscribe hit the bell let's go I've started my scary movies this week so this this feels nice <laughs> no none of those creepy crawlies you know can you see the shirt i hope you see spock last i saw him he was in uh romulan Ro romulus rom romul rom the planet is called rom romulus and you are a romulan Bottle. Can I ask you a few questions? Did you participate in the We'd like to know how you feel about the ability. There will be plenty of time for questions later. Kirk. I just want you to know how excited we all are to have a group of living legends with us on our maiden voyage. I remember reading about your missions when I was in grade school. Oh, really? <laughs> I'd like you to meet the helmsman of the Enterprise B. Demora? Ensign Demora Sulu. Sulu! My father's told me some interesting stories about you. Your father is a Carl Sulu? Yes, sir. Oh, you've met her before, but she was... It wasn't that long ago. It couldn't have been more than... Twelve years, sir. It wouldn't be the Enterprise without a Sulu at the helm. Aww. I was never that young. Because? Damn fine ship, if you ask me. Hi, friend. When did he find time for a family? Say if something's important, you make the time. Excuse me, gentlemen, if you'll take your seats. I'm pretty sure that's, um, that's Cameron from Ferris Bueller. I'd be honored if you'd give the order to get underway. Please, I insist. Let her rip. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> take us out. Wedding, good sir. Brought a tear to me, I will be quiet. Me too. How long has he been retired at this point? We're picking up a distress call, Captain. We're talking energy distortion. Two ships in our convoy. We can't break free. We need help. It's tearing us apart. Gravimetric distortion? Signal the closest starship. We're in no condition to mount a rescue. We don't even have a full crew aboard. We're the only one in range, sir. I guess it's up to us. Helm, lay in an intercept course and engage at maximum warp. 
How long will it take us to get three light years away? He doesn't seem very confident. What the hell is that? Their hulls are starting to buckle under the stress. Tractor beam? Mm -hmm. We don't have a tractor beam. You left space dock without a tractor beam. It won't be installed until Tuesday. Try generating a subspace field around the ships. That might break them free. Venting plasma from the warp nacelles. That might disrupt the ribbon's hold on the ship. It's not having any effect. The starboard vessel's hull is collapsing. How many people were on that ship? 265. Sir, the Lacoul's hull integrity is down to 12%. Captain Kirk, I would appreciate any suggestions you might have. First, move us within transporter range. What about the gravimetric distortions? They'll tear us apart. Risk is part of the game. You want to sit in that chair? We're within range, sir. Beam them directly. He was, like, pacing. You appear to be in some sort of temporal flux. I recognize him. Their life signs are phasing in and out of our space-time continuum. Sir, their hull's collapsing. Beam them out of there, Scott. Transport complete. Did we get them? 47 out of 150. Oh, shoot. They're refugees. Why? You're safe. You're on the Enterprise. No. I have to go you need back. To stay right here. No, you can go. You don't let me go back. Please. Can I help you? It's going to be okay. Guinan? Guinan. Guinan were the people that the Borg destroyed. An antimatter discharge directly ahead might disrupt the field long enough for us to break away. Integrity at 40%. It may be possible to simulate a torpedo blast using a resonance burst from the main deflector deck. Where are the deflector relays? I'll go. You have the bridge. Your place is on the bridge of your ship. I'll take care of it. He's like, oh, that chair did feel pretty comfortable, though. <laughs> Sheesh. Careful. Why am I having Poseidon adventure flashbacks? I don't know how much longer I can hold it together. Let's go! Activate main deflector. Now reverse, reverse. Ah! When will they learn? Seatbelts! We're clear. You did it, Kirk! There's some buckling on the starboard nacelle. We've also got a hull breach in the engineering section. Fields in place and holding. Where? Sections 20 through 28. On decks 13, 14, and 15. Bridge to Captain Kirk. Captain Kirk, please respond. Have Chekhov meet me on deck 15. My God! Was anyone in here? Hi. Captain James C. Kirk. Maybe he got out. He got out. Seventy-eight years later? Seventy-eight years later. What? What? Mr. Wolf, I always knew this day would come. Are you prepared to face the charges? Answer him. I am prepared. Are they in a play? We, the officers and crew of the USS Enterprise, being of sound mind and judgment, hereby make the following charges against Lieutenant Worf, that he did knowingly perform above and beyond the call of duty on countless occasions, that he has earned the admiration and respect of the entire crew. Mr. Worf, I hereby promote you to the rank of Lieutenant Commander with all the rights and privileges thereto. And may God have mercy on your soul. What are we doing? <laughs> I'll never make it. No one ever has. Worf in these Prince Eric Little Mermaid pants are is killing me. There's one thing I've learned over the years, never to underestimate a Klingon. <laughs> Remove the plank! <laughs> Number one, that's retract. Plank, not remove. Plank. I must confess, I am uncertain as to why someone falling into freezing water is amusing. It's all in good fun, Dave. I do not understand. Learn to be spontaneous. Live in the moment. Do something unexpected. Get it? <laughs> that was not funny. All hands make sail to Gansels and courses. 
I thought it was funny. Just imagine what it was like. No engines, no computers, the wind and the sea, the stars to guide you. Bad food, brutal discipline, no women. Bridge to Captain Picard. There's a personal message for you from Earth. The best thing about life at sea, Will, was that no one could reach you. Look alive there! <laughs> he loves this. What is it? Captain, are you all right? Yes, I'm fine. Excuse me. She knows that's not true. Just above that is to Holodeck 3. We're picking up a distress call from the Amargosa Observatory, sir. Red alert! All hands to battle stations, got the Picard to the bridge! That was fun. Oh my gosh, they're all still in costume. It looks like we're too late. It looks like the observatory took quite a beating. Sensors show five life signs aboard the station, Captain. Stand down from Red Alert. Will you begin an investigation? I'll be in my ready room. No, I thought Just do it! What the news did he get? Over here! It's all right. We're not struggling. It's okay. We're right here. <laughs> I'm Commander William Riker from the Starship Enterprise. Dr. Tolian Soren. Who attacked you, Doctor? It all happened so fast. Better take a look at this. Romulans. I thought it would be amusing. Is she still angry? I'd stay out of sick bay for a couple of days if I were you. She basically told him to. Data, you're not actually thinking about using that thing, are you? And in light of my recent episode with Dr. Crusher, now may be the appropriate time. The emotion chip? Mm -hmm. For 34 years, I have endeavored to become more human, to grow beyond my original programming. I am unable to grasp such a basic concept as humor. This emotion chip may be the only answer. But when Lore had the emotion chip, things went very sideways. Listen, first sign of trouble. I'm gonna deactivate it. Agreed. We found two dead Romulans on the station. We're analyzing their equipment to see if we can determine what ship they came from. There's still no indication of why they attacked the station. They practically tore the place apart. This could signify a new Romulan threat in this sector. Inform Starfleet Command. You want me to contact Starfleet? Is there a problem? No, sir. One of the scientists at Dr. Soren insisted on speaking with you. I told him you were very busy. He said it was absolutely imperative that he speak with you. Soren. Understood. That'll be all. It's not a great name, if you know what I mean. Wouldn't have a great track record. Is there anything No, wrong? thank you. Soren. Saruman. Something new from Focus 3? What? I believe this beverage has produced an emotional response. What are you feeling? I am uncertain. And because I have had little experience with emotion, I am unable to articulate the sensation. I'll explain later. That is it. I hate this. I think the chip is working. <laughs> oh, yes. I hate this. <laughs> I'm looking for a Dr. Soren from the observatory. Dr. Soren. Yes. I understand there's something urgent you wish to discuss with me. I must return to the observatory immediately. I must continue a critical experiment I've been running on the Amagosa star. We're still conducting our investigation. As soon as that is complete, then I will allow you and your colleagues to return. But until then, there's nothing I can do. Timing is very important in my experiment. Years of research will be lost. We're doing the best we can. If you... They say time is the fire in which we burn. Okay. Uh, like a secret drug handoff? Uh-oh. Try with It's an experimental compound the Romulans have been working on. In theory, it could stop all fusion within a star. Why would they look for it on a Federation observatory? That doesn't make any sense. Have Jordy and Data go over for the next away team. There's no sign of any trilithium over here. <laughs> I get it! I get it! <laughs> You get what? When you said the Commander Riker, the clown can stay, <laughs> but the Ferengi in the gorilla suit has to go. <laughs> During the Farpoint mission. Data, that was seven years ago. I just got it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. There's a door hidden right behind you. You can see the separation with my visor. There appears to be a dampening field in operation. Secret door? I believe I can reverse the polarity by attenuating my axial servo. Open sesame! Who is he? I have a magnetic personality. <laughs> I love it! Whee! <laughs> Whee! <laughs> you ever seen a solar probe with this kind of configuration? No, Jordy. 
I have not, have you? It is most unusual. <laughs> Mr. Tricorder. <laughs> Advisor's picking up something in the Theta band. It could be a trilithium signature. <laughs> Theta, we don't have time for this. I think something is wrong. <laughs> <sighs> oh, boy. I believe the emotion chip has overloaded my positronic relay. LaForge to Enterprise. Gentlemen, is there a problem? Dr. Soren. Yeah. Ah! I knew it. Do not... Do not hurt me. Please, please. Get him, Dita. What's that? Yes, come. Is there something I can do for you? Actually, I'm here to see if there's anything I can do for you. Oh, it's just family matters. You never met my brother and his wife, did you? No. I did. Robert. He was old school. So opinionated, so pompous and arrogant. He always had to have the last word. But he, he mellowed a little bit in the last few years. I was going to get together with them all next month. I thought we'd go to San Francisco. Renee's always wanted to see Starfleet Academy. He's so unlike his father. He's a dreamer. Imaginative. He's so very gentle. What's happened? Robert and Renee, they're burned to death in the fire. The boy? I'm sorry. It's all right, it's all right. Captain, it's not all right. About all the experiences that Rene is not going to have, about going to the academy, reading books and listening to music, falling in love, building a life. It's not going to happen now. I didn't realize he meant so much to you. I've come to feel that Rene was as close as I would get to him. He was so sweet. Oh my gosh. This is a very sad episode so far. You know, Counselor, recently I'd become very much aware that there were fewer days ahead than there are behind. But I took some comfort from the fact that the, the family would go on. Oh. But now there'll be no more Picards. Report. A quantum implosion has occurred within the Amargosa star. How is that possible? Sensor records show the observatory launched a solar probe into the sun a few moments ago. The implosion has produced a level 12 shockwave. It'll destroy everything in this system. Transporter room to bridge. I can't locate Commander LaForge or Mr. Data, sir. They are not on board. How long before the shockwave hits the observatory? Four minutes, 40 seconds. Mr. Worf? Aye, sir. Soren, transmit your coordinates. Enterprise to Commander Riker. You have two minutes left. We've got a level 12 shockwave coming in. We gotta get out of here! Sir, a Klingon bird of prey is decloaking off the port bow. <gasps> See if you can get to Jordy. I, I cannot, sir. Prepare for transport. <gasps> Jordy, too? What? I hope for your sake, you are initiating a mating ritual. The Romulans came looking for their missing trilithium. Impossible. We left no survivors on their outpost. If the Enterprise hadn't intervened, they would have found it. They didn't find it. And now we have a weapon of unlimited power. Do I know these chicks? Maybe. I have the weapon. And if you ever want me to give it to you, I would advise you to be a little more careful. Perhaps we are tired of waiting. Without my research, the Trilithium is worthless. They're like Klingon witches. Yeah. Set course for the Viridian system. Maximum warp. He lost his entire family when the Borg destroyed his planet. Soren escaped with a handful of other refugees. <gasps> he was the guy at the beginning. But Soren and 46 others were rescued Reclining. by the Enterprise B. That was a mission where James Kirk was killed. I checked the passenger manifest. Guess who else was on board? Soren is a name I haven't heard for a long time. It is very important that you tell me everything that you know. We think that Soren has developed a weapon, a terrible weapon. One that might even give him enough power to destroy him. Someone doesn't care about weapons. He just cares about getting back to the Nexus. The energy ribbon that destroyed that ship was not just some random phenomena traveling through the universe. It's a doorway to another place that we call the Nexus. And it's a place I've tried very, very hard to forget. It was like being inside joy. 
as if joy was something tangible and you could wrap yourself up in it like a blanket. And never in my entire life have I ever been as content. And then you were beamed away from that. Pulled, ripped. None of us wanted to go. I would have done anything, anything to get back there. And once I realized that wasn't possible, I learned to live with that. If he's still obsessed, he could be a very, very dangerous man. Wait, what? The Nexus is a door, like a... The ribbon is like a blanket drug. Huh? You're not gonna care about anything. Not the ship, not Soren, not me. All you'll want is to stay in the Nexus. This is a remarkable piece of equipment. Have you ever considered a prosthesis? that would make you look a little more, uh, more normal. What's normal? Normal is what everyone else is, and you are not. Speak for yourself, buddy. I am an El Orion. Some people call us a race of listeners. We listen. You have my complete attention. I want to listen to everything you know about Trilithium. Dr. Crusher has informed me that Data's emotion chip has been fused into his neural net and cannot be removed. Guinan was right. She said that Sodom was trying to get back to the ribbon. There has to be some connection with the Amagosa star. Give me a list of anything that was affected by the star's destruction, no matter how insignificant. This looks like cerebral. You all right? No, sir. I am finding it difficult to concentrate. I believe I am overwhelmed with feelings of remorse concerning my actions on the observatory. I experienced something I did not expect. Here. According to our current information, destruction of the Amargosa star has had the following effects in this sector. Our ship Bozeman was forced to make a course correction. Ambient magnetic fields... Wait, the Bozeman. Why would it make a course correction? The destruction of the Amargosa star has altered the gravitational forces throughout this sector. As a result, any ship passing through this region would have to make a minor course correction. Where's the ribbon now? This is its current position. Can you project its course? Captain... I cannot continue with this investigation. I wish to be deactivated until Dr. Crusher can remove the emotion chip. Are you having some kind of malfunction? No, sir. I simply do not have the ability to control these emotions. I have nothing but sympathy for what you are feeling. But right now, I need... No longer want these emotions! Learning to live with them. them no matter sir, what the circumstances... I cannot! You will not be deactivated! That is an order, Commander! Yes, sir. Now, can you project the course of the ribbon? I believe so. About what Picard's dealing with and his grief right now. Enhanced he has to keep going. Now you said that when the Amagosa star was destroyed, it affected the gravitational forces in this sector. Now, did the computer take that into account when it projected the course of the ribbon? I will make the appropriate adjustments. He's changing the course of the ribbon. Why doesn't he just fly into it with a ship? Our records show that every ship which has approached the ribbon has either been destroyed or severely damaged. He can't get to the ribbon, so he's trying to make the ribbon come to him. Does it pass near to any M class planets? There are two in the Viridian system. Well, it gets close to Viridian 3, but not close enough. What would happen to the ribbon's course if Sauron destroyed the Viridian star itself? That's where he's going. He's going to destroy Viridian 3? The collapse of the Viridian star would produce a shockwave similar to the one we observed at Amagosa. Destroying all the planets in this system. Viridian 3 is uninhabited. However, Viridian 4 supports a pre-industrial humanoid society. Population? 230 million, sir. Holy crap! Did a course for the Viridian system, maximum warp. Holy crap! Still trying to figure out how this could possibly lead to Kirk. We have entered orbit. The Viridian 3. Prepare to transport me to the surface. This contains all the information you'll need to make a Trilithian weapon. It's been coded. Once I'm safely to the surface, I'll transmit the decryption sequence to me. Mistress, the Federation starship is entering the system. We're still cloaked. They can't see us. Klingon vessel, we know what you're doing. We demand that you return our chief engineer and leave this system immediately. There's no time for this. Eliminate. We are no match for them. I think it's time we gave Mr. LaForge his sight back. Come on. According to my calculations, a solar probe launched from either the Klingon ship or the planet's surface will take 11 seconds to the sun. However, since we do not have an exact point of origin, it take us between 8 and 15 seconds to lock our weapons on. Pretty big margin of error. Much too big. Mr. Data, how long before the ribbon arrives? Like 47 minutes, sir. Klingon vessel decloaking directly ahead, sir. Hello. Okay. Captain, what an unexpected pleasure. It is very important that I speak with Sauron. The doctor is no longer aboard our ship. Then 
I will beam to his location. He would be quite upset if an armed away team interrupted. We can't trust them. For all we know, they killed Jordan. I will be your prisoner. But first, you must beam me to the surface so that I can speak with Solon. We'll consider it a prisoner exchange. He's not actually going to be their prisoner. Receiving the coordinates, Captain. Turn around. Welcome, Captain. You must think I'm quite the madman. Hmm? The thought had crossed my mind. I know why you're here. You're not entirely confident you can shoot down my pro. You've come to dissuade me from my horrific plan. <laughs> Do be careful, Captain. That's a 50 gigawatt force field. <gasps> it's working. The visor's transmitting. Human females are so repulsive. She's so beautiful. I have not been behaving like myself lately. You've been behaving. Like a human. So the nicest thing Jordy's ever said to him. I'm sure we can find another way of getting you into this nexus. I spent 80 years looking for another way. Believe me, this is the only one. No different from when the Borg destroyed your world. They killed millions too, including your wife, your children. Nice try. He's speaking truth. You know, there was a time when I wouldn't hurt a fly. Then the Borg came. We're all gonna die sometime. It's just a question of how. And you will too, Captain. Aren't you beginning to feel time gaining on you? It's like a predator. It's stalking you. But in the end, time is going to hunt you down and make the kill. It's our mortality that defines us, Solin. It's part of the truth of our existence. What if I told you I found a new truth? The Nexus? Time has no meaning there. The predator has no teeth. Sounds like a drug, like a... Addiction. Can you find a way to scan for life forms? I would be happy to, sir. Love scanning for life forms. You precious little life forms. Where are you? I'd like to run a level three diagnostic on the port plasma relays. Fine, let's do that. What does this give them? Replay from time index 924. Magnify the section and enhance. Ha! Their shields are operating on a modulation of 257. <laughs> Plasma coil is part of their cloaking device. Let's get a stabilizer on that conduit. We sent a low-level ionic pulse. It might reset the coil and trigger their cloaking device. You'll have two seconds of vulnerability. Come on, free. Fire at the wheel. Initiating ionic pulse. Make it quick. Ah! We are cloaking. What? Our shields are down. Boom. Fire. Wow. Good job, yes. everybody. Tito! <laughs> I can't tell if I love it or hate it. I wonder if he knows his escape pod. Um, like, the Klingon ship is... Bye-bye. I also wonder if that means... He'll be destroyed, or maybe he'll... Just get into the Nexus. Coolant leak! We have a coolant leak, everybody! Let's go! Let's get out of here! Five minutes from a warp core breach! There's nothing I can do! It's okay. I have an appointment with Eternity, and I don't want to be late. Are they sure they're all out? Separation complete. Hand controls are offline! Um... Restore power, take power from the photons and beam it to the stabilizers. Use the nacelle port. Come on, there's gotta be something. Rotted auxiliary power to yes. lateral thrusters. Uh, it's a mountain ahead of us. Holy crap. Bad. Never seen anything like that on Star Trek. Yes! Come on! Yes! Face! 
Throw a rock at his head. No! Oh my gosh! He really did it. It's a, it's a foregone conclusion that 237 million people are going to die? Wait a second. Did I just see it destroy the Enterprise? What is this? Where am I? Did I just see it destroy the Enterprise? I thought Enterprise was on Earth. Love you, Father. Say Merry Christmas, Papa. See the present? Give your father some room. <laughs> Cup of Earl Grey. That would be perfect. That would be Crusher. Merry Christmas, Uncle. And Merry Christmas to you, too. Renee, can you help me with the table? Where he doesn't realize he's in the thing? Did he forget all that? This isn't right. This can't be real. It's as real as you want it to be. What's going on? Why am I here? You're in the Nexus. This is what you want. I never had a home like this. Not a wife and children. But these are all mine. Think of me as an echo of the person you know. These are my children. These are my children. Time has no meaning here. You can go back and see them born or... Go what? forward and see your grandchildren. And it's ready, Papa. Go on, Thomas. Go on. Go on without me. Can I leave the Nexus? Where would you go? Well, as I said, time has no meaning here. So if you leave, you can go anywhere. All right, I know exactly where I want to go. Up on Viridian 3, just before Solon destroyed the star. If you were to come back with me, together we... I can't we... leave, but I bet I know someone who can. And from his point of view, he just got here too. Oh, that's how they did it. It's in the Nexus. James T. Kirk. Beautiful day. Yes, it certainly is. How the heck is he going to explain this to him? I'm wondering, do you realize... Hold on a minute. Do you smell something burning? Looks like somebody was trying to cook some eggs. I'm Captain Jean-Luc Picard of the Starship Enterprise. I'm from what you would consider the future, the 24th century. He's been dead seven years. You gotta tell him. How long are you gonna be rattling around in that kitchen? The future? This is the past. This is nine years ago. Sad. The day I told her I was going back to Starfleet. These are Katarian eggs, her favorite. I know how real this must seem to you. We are both of us caught up in some kind of temporal nexus. Enterprise B in the deflector control room. And uh, stir these, will you? The bulkhead in front of me disappeared, and then I found myself out there just now, chopping wood. Right? History records that you died saving the Enterprise B from an energy ribbon 80 years ago. Captain, look, I need your help. To save 200 plus million people. We have to stop a man called Solon from destroying a star. Millions of lives are at stake. You say history considers me dead. Who am I to argue with this? Starfleet officer, you have a duty. I was out saving the galaxy when your grandfather was in diapers. Besides which, I think the galaxy owes me one. Kirk. I was like you once, so worried about duty. I couldn't see past my own uniform. And what did it get me? An empty house. Not this time. I'm gonna walk up these stairs. March into that bedroom and tell Antonia I want to marry her. Kirk, millions of lives are at stake. This is not your bedroom. No, it's not. This is my uncle's barn in Idaho. This is the day I met Antonia. This nexus of yours. Very clever. I can start all over again and do things right from day one. It's like the holodeck on stairways. But he's been here for 80 years. Why does he feel like he's just got here. I must have jumped that 50 times. Scared the hell out of me each time. Except this time. Because it isn't real. Antonia. She isn't real either, is she? Nothing here matters. You know, maybe this isn't about an empty house. Maybe it's about that empty chair on the bridge of the Enterprise. Ever since I left Starfleet, I haven't made a difference. Now's your chance. Captain of the Enterprise. Close to retirement? I'm not planning on it. Let me tell you something. Don't. Don't let them promote you. Don't let them do anything. It takes you off the bridge of that ship because while you're there, you can make a difference. Come back with me. Help me stop Solon. Make a difference again. Who am I to argue with the captain of the Enterprise? I take it the odds are against us and the situation is grim. <laughs> you know, if Spock were here, he'd say that I was an irrational, illogical human being. He met Spock. Sounds like fun. Oh, 
see this again. Where's Kirk, though? They meet on the bridge. Yoo-hoo! Just who the hell are you? He's James T. Kirk. Don't you read history? I've got to get to the launcher. The ribbon will be here in a minute. I'll take care of Sora. Come on, couldn't you have taken a... phaser with you from Nexus? Uh. I am familiar with history, Captain. You're dead. Oh. Ah. Ah. Come on! Not again! Come on! I thought you were heading for the launcher. I changed my mind. Captain's prerogative. We need that control pad. Two against one. Two icon captains. Uh... Say bye-bye to your control, dum-dum. Oh! oh, my hands are so sweaty. But the women won't leave them. Out of time. The control pad, it's still on the other side. We have to work together. We are working together. Good luck, Captain. Call me Jim. <laughs> Jump, Jim. Disengage, disengage. Disengage faster. Get away from that launcher. But Kirk. So if it didn't destroy the planet, then the ribbon doesn't come and suck them up. Watch him die twice. At least both times he went out saving the world. Three Starfleet vessels have arrived in orbit and have begun to beam up the Enterprise survivors. At first, I was unprepared for the unpredictable nature of emotions. Having experienced 261 distinct emotional states, <laughs> I believe I have learned to control my feelings. They will no longer control me. <laughs> One life sign, very faint. Another family reunited. Data, are you all right? I am uncertain, Counselor. Perhaps the chip is malfunctioning. I think it's working perfectly. I'm gonna pretend to not be freaked out by the yellow tears, because this is tender. I'm gonna miss this ship. She went before her time. Someone once told me time was a predator that stalked us all our lives. I rather believe that time is a companion who goes with us on the journey, reminds us to cherish every moment, because it'll never come again. Truth bomb. Again. What we leave behind is not as important as how we've lived. After all, number one, we're only mortal. I plan to live forever. I always thought I'd get a shot at this chair one day. Perhaps you still will. Somehow I doubt that this will be the last ship to carry the name Enterprise. We got a Farragut. Two to beam up. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. That movie gave me so much to think about. It was pretty amazing seeing Kirk and Picard together. And like I said, I did not know how they were going to do it with time, but they figured out a way. This nexus. Um, I feel sad a little bit for a few reasons. <laughs> One, although an amazing send-off. I wanted Picard to tell Kirk like how legendary he was as a cat and he probably knew that like he was getting all that fanfare at the beginning but I wanted him to say like you inspired me in thousands in Starfleet and your name is still remembered a hundred years later. Maybe that would have been too cliche. <laughs> this is just how I think about the perfect ending in my mind. The other part 
Guys, I was so sure that when he could go back in time, he would go back to right before the fire and he would make a call and tell his brother and nephew to change something so that they could still live and then go on to save the world. It was so good to see. I wish the crew, the two crews could have interacted a little more or at all. I wish we could have seen Spock and Bones. I kept hoping they would pop up. Kirk was the same as always, just so charming and charismatic and funny. I like to think that, you know, where he goes after death is like the Nexus, you know? Oh, I don't like how they keep dropping hints about Picard getting older and not very much time in front of us. Don't like that. Stop doing that. I really enjoyed it despite, you know, wishing for a little bit more interactions of the crews and whatnot. But I guess as a Trek fan, the moments that Picard and Kirk were together were like really special and something that fans were dying to see and can appreciate how they did that. Also, just wish Beverly was his wife in his drug ribbon fantasy, but that's okay. I thought overall it was an interesting plot and in how they brought it all together uh, to make it work with what they needed to do. So I had fun. That was my first TNG movie and I've heard the next one is even better. So I can't wait. Thank you so much for watching along with me. I'll see you next time.